Woman Diane Black is that voice, and I would like for her to share a little bit more on her specific piece of legislation. I want to thank the gentleman from North Carolina, my good friend, Congressman Walker, for bringing us together for this very important conversation. Uh, Mr. Speaker, a lot of Americans work very hard to deliver these historic majorities to Congress. But today, there is a feeling that the more things change, the more they stay the same. We build this as the new American Congress, yet, like like last year and the year before and the year before that too, too many House passed bills remain trapped in the U.S. Senate. The House passed the RAINS Act in July, which would prevent the Obama administration from legislating in the form of government rule and would give Congress the final say over the major federal regulations, just like our founding fathers intended. But where is it today? Nearly four months later, it continues to languish in the upper chamber, awaiting for a chance for debate. More recently, the House passed the Justice for Victims of Iranian Terrorism Act, requiring Iran to make good on its $43 billion of delinquent payments to the victims of its state-sponsored terrorism. Once again, this good and decent bill is collecting dust in the Senate. Mr. Speaker, I understand the challenges that our Senate leadership faces. The do-nothing Senate majority of last Congress is now the do-nothing Senate minority of this Congress. They are filibustering countless House-passed bills and bring the wheels of government to a grinding halt. But we cannot let that stop us from bringing up these bills for full debate in the light of day and putting our priorities in front of the American people. And while we're at it, it's time to change the rules of engagement in the upper chamber. In a body of 100 people, a majority is 51. It really is that simple. The cloture rule is nowhere to be found in the U.S. Constitution. It is an antiquated Senate rule that is not effective, effectively serving the institution today. I call on the Senate leaders to turn the page and to break the logjam so that we can put the American people's priorities on the president's desk. I don't doubt that the president will veto many of these measures. For goodness sake, he's vetoed a bill to fund our troops, so I put nothing past him, and let's put, that, let's put him on record. Let's ensure that President Obama is required to accept or reject our ideas and defend that decision to the American people. Mr. Speaker, the bottom line is this. The American people delivered us this majority, and they expect us to use it. I again thank my colleague from North Carolina, and I yield back the balance of my time.